from history. Greetings, dear viewers, and prepare to be enthralled by another bizarre tale of a peculiar individual who graced the stage of human history. Today we shall recount the farcical tale of Timothy Dexter, a man so eccentric, his own wife pretended to be dead for the better part of two decades, just to get a break from him. Timothy Dexter, born in 1747 in Malden, Massachusetts, was an uneducated man who acquired substantial wealth through a series of incidents most of us would consider sheer dumb luck. Within our fleeting five minutes together, allow me to regale you with a few choice anecdotes about this luck-ridden lad. First, let's shine some light on his rise to prosperity. Mr. Dexter, in a twist of fate that could only happen to the most fortunate or fortunate fools, as I like to call them, purchased a large amount of now worthless continental currency. Lo and behold, the US government decided they ought to buy back this seemingly useless currency. And thus our Timothy emerged from the obscurity, his purse now groaning with riches. So, how does a newly minted nouveau riche spend his wealth? Well, in one instance, Dexter decided to corner the market on warming pans. You know, those delightful metal bed-warming devices that our ancestors employed before the days of electric blankets. Ever the risk-taker, Dexter sent a shipment of these warming pans to the Caribbean, a place known for its year-round sweltering heat. Recipe for disaster, surely. However, Timothy's luck reared its absurd head again. The locals, baffled by these curious contraptions, ingeniously repurposed the warming pans as ladles for the molasses industry. So, while Dexter set out to warm the hearts, or rather bottoms, of the Caribbean folk, he inadvertently sweetened their lives instead. Not content with being a mere wealthy eccentric, Timothy Dexter craved the glaring spotlight of fame he authored a book delightfully titled A Pickle for the Knowing Ones or Plain Truth in a Homespun Dress. His pursuit of the simple life and disdain for the pomp and circumstance of conventional writing was reflected in his dismissal of punctuation, resulting in a hilariously incomprehensible tone. Critics found it tasteless, but you see, our dear Dexter knew how to turn lemons into lemonade, or at least into a very sour pickle. He did not let criticism deter him, and even released a second edition that included a page with nothing but punctuation marks, inviting readers to pepper and salt it as they ladies, an offer no doubt too tempting for the persnickety grammarians. In his quest for attention, Dexter erected statues of himself and other notables in his garden. His home had signs declaring it Dexter's Palace, while his dog, Lord Timothy Dexter, yes, you heard that right, elevated almost to royalty, strutted about bedecked in a gaudy gilded collar inscribed with his name. Ah, and there's the sweet story of his faux mourning wife. You see... Dexter's better half grew tired of his eccentricities and found a way out by pretending to die. Dexter held a lavish funeral for her, yet she was very much alive, merely hiding out of sight to enjoy a life of quiet solitude. Alas, their peace couldn't last forever, and she ultimately returned to the wacky world of Dexter's wild whims. And thus, my dear audience, draws to a close another account of an odd character plucked from history's pages. Through a series of bizarre escapades and blind luck, Timothy Dexter walked amongst us mere mortals in a cloud of absurdity. Surely he is a testament to the notion that truth is often stranger than fiction, and in his case, infinitely more humorous. Until next time, stay weird!